Welcome. Welcome to Living Mosaic. My name is Martha Holden. I am a member of the Spark of Humanity Network, which is sponsoring these Living Mosaic shows. And with me today is my friend Miriam Hansen, who is a writer and a gardener. And for me, a model of someone who is finding her way into her niche in the mosaic, doing what she believes she can do to be part of the solution. And so I'm very grateful that she can join us this morning, or this afternoon, whatever time it is for you, whenever you're watching us. Miriam, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. And can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah. Um, so I grew up in Montreal, Quebec, mm -hmm. um, as a double minority, so meaning I'm Jewish and I, our family spoke English. Mm -hmm. um, so that made us minorities in two senses in growing up there. And I moved to Vermont um, pretty much uh, in my late 20s, and I've lived in Vermont my entire essentially adult life. Um, I married an American and have two children and, and inherited two other children and raised the family mostly in the Northeast Kingdom and then uh, moved to central Vermont about 22 years ago. And I've done all kinds of jobs, but essentially what was prominent always was growing things, teaching about that and writing about that and uh, yeah, and I, uh, I consider myself a writer, even though I have dabbled around the edges in many ways. But I learned very young that um, if you wanted a job and somebody asked you a question, the answer is always yes. <laughs> so, you know, because that way you, have, you make an opening. So I, I've understood from a very young age, I think, that openings are really important. Thank you. Yes, good. And they are. Um, can you tell me what interests you or what appeals to you about the concept that there is a, there is a solution and that can be yep. conceived of as a living mosaic in which we each have our unique and essential little niche in the mosaic? But well, another thing that I have thought since I was a small child was that there should be exchange programs from very young ages all the way up. So it occurred to me, like, why not go across the street and have tea with a neighbor? So if the child is three, you probably need to go with a parent. But as you get to mm -hmm. school, you could go further afield. And um, indeed, there was such a program in Montreal uh, after I had moved to Vermont where there was tension in a community between the Quebecois, the French Canadians, and the Hasidic community. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of tension, and they did a small pilot program where the Hasidic, probably the man, because the woman would have been awkward, but would go to a, and have a cup of tea at mm. a Quebecois family and vice versa. And it really did a lot to mm. address the problems. Oh, that's wonderful. I thought, I, to me, it seems so obvious that that's what we should be doing everywhere in the world. Right. And so in that sense, it seems to me that fits the idea of a mosaic. It, it, yes, it That does. we need to know each other. Right, right. And perhaps not judge each other. Uh, or, yeah, err on the side of not judging each other, <laughs> right. if we can. <laughs> we can. See that as a goal, potentially. Yes. Uh, yeah, work on that. I, I find that the more I feel like I'm moving toward or into my own niche, um, the less energy I have to judge other people uh -huh. or think that they should be different than they are. Well... I guess, you know, I, I was telling you about my, my recent misadventure with my hairdresser, and, I, and I've been thinking about it, because when we get our feelings hurt, mm -hmm. and we uh, experience it as somebody else hurting right. our feelings, uh, there's a whole bunch of emotions that come up. 
but we don't know what the other person is carrying and right. what they're experiencing on right. their side. And yeah, so I do think uh, it's really important to leave a lot of space uh, in terms, as you say, in terms of judgment. Right, with other people. Yeah. Right, yeah. And maybe with ourselves, too. Uh, yeah, that's always harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bumbling forward to where we feel drawn, but not with the, they talk about the inner critic. Not to. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. Giving ourselves uh, the benefit of the doubt. Giving right. ourselves and the other the benefit of the doubt. It's not always easy. Right, self-compassion. How about compassion? Uh, compassion is my favorite concept in Judaism. Okay. And I grew up thinking that compassion and the, the Hebrew word Yiddishized in Judaism is Rachmanes. Mm -hmm. I thought Rachmanes was the point. Oh, okay. And so I have been rather disappointed <laughs> to, <laughs> to learn that not everybody agrees with that. <laughs> it, seems like, it seems like if compassion is not the point, then what is the point? Right. right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, it allows yeah. It. So one of the things that made me delighted that you were willing to join us today was the, this movement you've made into a form of, if, I, th I suppose it's activism, but it's encouraging others. I see, I see you as being sort of close into your niche as of, I mean, I love the writing and the gardening, the growing things, uh, that, and also as, a, as an advocate and an activist and encouraging and supporting others to be engaged yeah. as, they, as they believe to follow their hearts. And these are little ways that they can, that they can have an impact and get together and have an impact together. And because you write beautifully, of course, I appreciate the emails I get from you. So, but leaving that aside, how did you, how do you see yourself in this? I mean, I see you as, oh, there's my friend Miriam. She is part of the solution. She is, you know, she's right in right. there being part of the solution, encouraging other people to be part of the solution. And she must feel like she's very much in the niche because she's writing and she's gardening. She's got the spectacular gardens. And so there she is. So do you feel like you're in your niche? And how do you feel about all this? Um, well, mostly what I feel is that there came a point when I didn't see a choice. Mm. And I was remembering today, I was probably, again, you know, little eight, nine years old, mm -hmm. I remember asking my mother, because I was born very much in the shadow of the Holocaust, 1949, mm -hmm. and I asked my mother how it was possible that this could happen, how mm -hmm. the other people would allow it to happen, and that there was no answer, and that stuck with me. And wow. so now, uh, as we're watching so much, I mean, it never stopped happening, really, from that time forward, but I think the extent of our knowing has increased, and uh, yeah, for me, it really began when Trump got elected, mm -hmm. and I just felt uh, I had to do whatever I could, and what, as you say, I can do, I can write, and mm -hmm. I can... I can communicate, mm -hmm. and I mostly I can communicate with most people and find where people are and encourage them. Mm -hmm. and because what struck me is how much fear there is, how yeah. frightened we are, how helpless we feel, and you know some people are built. Uh, you know, in a much more extroverted way, and they have, uh, they're more, more robust. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who are uh, more introverted, more fragile, and less likely to join. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of this, all, all the stuff with the political activism really happened around me. I was just writing postcards, and then 
and, and then being who I am, I thought, oh, well, more would be better. So who else will write? So I started looking around and inviting people. Pretty soon I had 26 people, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, well, we should start a group because there was no active group in Montpelier. Mm. So I thought, well, that's the capital. We should have a group. So with somebody else, I started the group, and now we have 100 people. And I guess what struck me is that people who are shy uh, and more introverted are less likely to look around and think, right. I can do it, whatever. Right. Right. And so I tailored our group mm -hmm. to appeal also to those people, to feel very accessible to people who might be less likely to join. Mm -hmm. Does that answer yeah. your question? Sure, yes. And how, well, how did, how did you find your, it was a process because part of the, part of the hope for this Living Mosaic series is that we will be um, supporting others in finding their niche within uh -huh. the solution and and how do we because the niche niche is unique we you know we can't all be Miriam Hansen right nor can we all thank God be Martha Holden um, so how do we you know, how do we what's in your experience what what sort of drew you towards how did you know this might fit what was the feeling what was the process so whatever might encourage someone else into sort of exploring what might be their part of the solution? So this is just the guess, because I, right. I don't really know the answer. But mm -hmm. I guess what seems logical to me is that the first question is, what can I do? Right. And then see, what is it that you feel able to do? OK. You do that thing. Then you, it either works or it doesn't work. Yeah. If it does work, you're like, oh. I can do this, which is what happened with me. It was right. like, oh, I, mm -hmm. I can write in a way that... Mm -hmm. So what is it that you have the capacity to do? And then build on that. Okay, that's... And for people to... Because I think we probably both have friends who say, oh, they're sort of like addicted to it, sort of like a, a mud bog. You know, well, I can't do anything. There's nothing I can do. You know, how uh, to, that, to get out of that stuck mud, we're both familiar with mud season. You know, how would he get out of that into a place where, oh, there's the possibility of being active, interacting here in a way that's constructive, and that ends up being satisfying, right? Because are you feeling, you're feeling reasonably satisfied with oh, what you're doing, well, I would hope. I feel encouraged. Okay, good feel, enough. Yeah, I feel, you know, like mostly now what I'm doing with this group is trying to get people to donate. Right. So when somebody who has never donated before mm -hmm. writes me and says, done, I'm like, okay, right. that appeal worked. Right. So let's, you know, like I'm always trying to fine tune the mm -hmm. way that I approach it. So, and there are certainly people who say to me, like, it's much easier to get people to write postcards than donate. Um, okay. Because postcards are an activity, okay. whereas donation is money and people feel awkward about being told what to do with money. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. there's a whole series of steps that I've learned about, like how to wiggle. So I, I think, you know, um, one of my brothers often refers to finding your way as twisting and turning. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, oh, it's okay to twist and turn. Like, it's okay to feel like you, helpless. It's okay to feel like there's nothing you can do. But after you feel like that, then, ha, huh, find something. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Beca uh, beca right. Because in the end, uh, I guess that's the other thing, you know, that uh, I've struggled with you know, lots of different things in my life. And I have found pretty consistently what is really satisfying is helping somebody. Um, if you can make a difference for somebody else, right. uh, 
it's it's a selfish act because it lifts you up. Right. So so maybe that's the appeal. Be selfish. Do but, something but, nice. Do, do well. What I'm hearing you say is do something <laughs> that feeds you by by supporting someone else and doing what feeds them. Yeah, or so, doing so, what helps them. Right, doing yeah. what helps them. What, yeah. What, well, I think that for people to find is the metaphor we're using, the, the niche in the mosaic, that that uh -huh. is, you know, there's a place of satisfaction, there's a place of potential for fulfillment, a potential place of engagement, of being part of something larger that's good, that's hopeful, and that that's a moving, helping somebody move towards that yep. feels good for us, but it's also yep. know, just exactly what they're hungry for. Martha, we're herd animals. We are okay. not eagles. We're zebras. That, oh, I like that. You know, yeah, I right. mean, that's the nature of our species. We're right. not, we're, we need to be connected. Right. Uh, if we're not, you know, there are certainly loners. Mm-hmm. Um, but even loners need some. And what I find is the most harmful to people is when they don't feel connected. Right. And so, uh, yeah, plug in to something. Just right. plug into and something. And even if it's very small. Yeah. Well, just anything, anything. Is, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the nature of your metaphor. Yeah, that's right? true, right. Uh, mosaics tiny. are tiny little pieces. Right. And when you add them together, they can make something beautiful. Right. Yeah. And beautiful and, and just living as a mosaic. It's a living mosaic and right. evolving. So we need to pay attention and stay awake so we can continue in the life of the mosaic, so we can continue to be part of the solution, not... Say you know, be, as you say, you continue to fine tune. You're not like this is what worked two years ago, yeah. And so I'm going to do it this way. No, you keep on fine tuning to stay stay connected with the life of the mosaic and ask for feedback. Yeah, well, you yeah, know, or listen to what other people are saying to you. Yeah, or or not saying, but not doing. Picking up their body language. What you're hoping for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, this political activism is, uh, yeah, I don't regard it, like I told you earlier, I don't regard it as a passion or, or the main thing I'm doing. But I am also intensely curious about everything. Okay. Like everything. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, lately I've been very curious about the post office because mm. um, we lost our postal carrier, she retired, and we stopped getting mail. Oh. And I thought, well, what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. so I just feel like, understand that all the things that we live with, from the most mundane to mm, the most complex, are systems that are made by humans. They're right. all human decisions. And if we're not happy with the decisions mm -hmm. and we're not happy with the systems, mm -hmm. we can change them. Because there's right. the elephants are not designing our world. Yeah. The humans are designing our world. And we can ask, why are we doing it this way? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing it in a way that makes for so much suffering? Right. What is the other option? Right. And it's, you know, recently I got involved with the senior center and mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh, concern about the senior center, you know, was sort of in a slump and, mm -hmm. and things were not going well. And what struck me was how difficult it was to get people to... Uh, put the word out to each other. I'm a networker. You are. I think that's probably my niche. Okay. I'm a networker. Okay. I, everything that I bump into, the first question I ask myself is, who do I know? Mm, and the mm, second mm. question is, if I don't know anybody, who do I know who knows somebody? Right. Because that, and if I, and if the answer to that is also nothing, 
then I think, how can I get to know somebody? Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, where, what access mm -hmm. is there? And so, yeah, that's, and I realized like that's not everybody's skill. Um, some people have tremendous technical mm -hmm. ability, mm -hmm. um, and, but are not so, uh, it's not so easy for them to maneuver with other humans. And, and yeah, it's like you say, finding your niche, find what you're good at. Right. And then take it up a notch. <laughs> right. Does that make sense? It, it does. It does make sense. But I'm thinking about the people who are sort of like stuck in their uh, their either despair or their depression or their let's we'll leave the people who are stuck in their denial out of it. Well, but yeah. the people, you know, um, how how to I don't know. You know, clear away some of the how to part the blinds. Uh, how to part them? Yes. How, whatever. How how to how to help them get in touch with that, because I believe that within everybody there's a part that right. wants to connect, yeah. that has has creative potential, yeah. whatever the creativity is, yeah. and that wants to be engaged, and that, that wants life and air. But yeah. it's like, we, you know, our families, our culture, or ourselves have poured these huge mounds of, you know, landfill on top of it. Yeah, um, you know, we should hope it should be man manure to support growth, but we're not sure. It's smothering. But anyway, you know, to help people yeah. feel that part of themselves that needs the vitality encouraged. Well, I mean, that's the essence of compassion. Oh, okay. Right. That's the essence of kindness. Okay. You know, I saw a woman walking down the street, and it was cold, mm -hmm. and she didn't have her gloves on, mm -hmm. and I said. Put your gloves on. It's cold, and, and then, and then, you know, after a while, I recognized her and realized she had been at this potluck at the senior center, and uh, and we started talking about her health, and she was sharing her dismay with me over, mm -hmm. uh, you know, health appointments she'd had, and and I was listening, and we were talking, and then she looked at me. And she said, "You're nice," Aww. and I and I thought. Yeah, like everybody should be nice. Right, right. Like reach out. Right, to but some it. people that's not easy. It's like they're. It's like they have frostbite on their up to their elbows, so they can't reach out. Then we need to be nice to them. Good point. Right. You know, yeah. like, uh, yeah, you know, you and I both know what it's like to be stuck in a dark place. Right. And and really, then the question is how, uh, who helped you out? Yeah, yeah. And you know. what helped you out? Because I think for like the gardening is is helpful. There are things that yeah. there are activities that help. Um, getting outdoors and walking is helpful. Yeah. Gardening is helpful. Doing yeah. anything outdoors, not being on screens, uh, excuse me, you know, is helpful. You know, in a way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like in my own experience, I would say. Probably what has been the most helpful in my life has been bumping into people mm, mm. who have opened doors. And yeah, I don't mean yeah. opportunity. Right. Just like heart doors. Right. Connected. And yeah. And sometimes it can be, I mean, even if you're in a dark place, at one point I was in a dark place and I... I decided, well, I need to help somebody. And I bumped into a woman in, in the town where I was living who was losing her eyesight, and I started reading to oh, her. Oh, okay. And that was enormously helpful to me. Right. And I made a friend. Right. And right. Then that was a friendship that supported me for like 15 years. Right. It was a very important friend. You know, like you don't know what you're going to find. So even if you <laughs> can't move, even if you're like have frostbite, mm -hmm. move your finger. Like just yeah. do s even the smallest thing. Right. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I, you know, you and I are, are both now elderly, mm -hmm. we shall say. <laughs> Uh, so I think, well, we have a great resource in the senior center. I, I call it the clubhouse. 
Right. Because that's really what it is. You yeah. know. Good. We've so, got six more seconds. Uh, oh, th those are seconds. Those are seconds oh. now. I can tell by the speed at which they're clicking. <laughs> thank you, Miriam, for coming. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you for the wonderful people here at Orca. Blessings. Mm -hmm.